there was a girl in Chicago, and her name was Miriam. She was born. I don't know if I if I said it this year, but anyway, Moshe, if you know it, you have to still be quiet. So, unless there's something I missed, and you can, you know, coach me. So you're on film. Be careful. <laughs> be careful. <laughs> So this girl, her name was Miriam, and she lived in Chicago, on the south side of Chicago. She wasn't religious. They were hardly Jewish. They were, she was born Jewish, but that's about it. And her parents felt uh, out of town. You know, they still have very strong day schools, uh, Sunday programs, Talmud Torah. And they felt, you know, she's Jewish. We should send her to Talmud Torah, let her a little, little bit learn about where she comes from, maybe a little Hebrew, Upan, you know, Israel. You know, a little bit, not too much. So they sent her to this conservative, or maybe reform even, Talmud Torah. And the rule there was that you, they hired religious teachers, but the religious teachers are not allowed to take their students home for Shabbos. That was the rule. They didn't want no religion. They weren't teaching religion. They were teaching history, Jewish history, not religion. Anyway, there was one teacher, just to show you, Loyalecha Hamlacha Ligmar. That's only number eight or 12, and we're on 100, right? It's not for you to finish. This teacher said, this teacher fell in love with this little kid. She was nine years old, fourth grade. And she decided she's taking her home for Shabbos. She's going to invite her for Shabbos, even though she's going to get fired. Sunday she's getting fired, because you're not allowed to. So she calls up the parents and she says, you know, your little Miriam, I would love to have her for Shabbos. They're like, okay, no problem. They send this little Miriam for Shabbos. She comes to her teacher for Shabbos. She stands there, and now the teacher's lighting candles. The teacher's lighting candles. This little Miriam, if you can imagine, in America, never, there are many people who never saw candles being lit. Never. Never. Just somebody that I know went to C program in Miami. And she said that in, in a room of a hundred people, she asked of the hundred people to raise their hand if they know anyone, if they have a relative, not if they know, if they have a relative in their family that intermarried with a non-Jew. Every single person of the hundred people raised their hand. You hear? In a room of a hundred Jews, every single Jew in that room had a relative that married a non-Jew. So the Holocaust, that he killed six million you understand? In America, it's much bigger than that because once a man marries a non-Jewish woman, all the children from that generation forever are not Jewish. So you just put them all in the gas chamber and cut them off. That's it. So this girl came back from the C program. She was like, beyond herself, what's going on in America? Which has been going on in America for a very long time. So there could be a kid in Chicago who never saw candles in her house on Shabbos. So she was amazed. So she said, where are my candles? You're lighting. I want to light. So the teacher said, no, I'll light for you. She said, no, I don't want you to light for me because I don't know if I'm ever going to get a chance again. My mother doesn't light, and I, I would like to light candles. So the teacher said, okay, it's not the end of the world. We'll, we'll, we'll give her two candles. So they gave her two candles, and she, the, the teacher went like this, and the kid didn't know what she was doing. She also went like this, and she made the bracha, and she made the bracha, and she lit her two little candles. Fine. I'm, I'm not going to take too much time on the story. She lit her candles, and she went home. After Shabbos, the teacher came back to school. Interesting, she told the school what she did, that she, you know, that she invited her, whatever, she didn't want it to come from the parents, and they didn't fire her. For whatever, they said, don't do it again, but they didn't fire her. Okay. Anyway, this girl went through eighth grade, Talmud Torah Sunday school, that was it. And she was in public school, and her parents decided South Side of Chicago wasn't so great. They're going to send her to a private school. Right across the street from where they lived was a private Catholic school. So they figured, you know, even though our, our, we're Jewish, they, were, they didn't really practice it. So they took their little Miriam and they brought her to high school, ninth grade, to St. Mary's, whatever, private Catholic school. This girl goes to the private Catholic school and they got her off. She doesn't have to pray with everybody. She can sit on the side while they pray. But of course she made friends. She wasn't that strong in her Jewish roots altogether. And by 11th grade, her name wasn't Miriam anymore. It was Mary. By 12th grade, she was already praying with them. And it was all over. She was one of them. She ended up going to college to a private Catholic college and she met Vinny and she fell in love with Vinny and to roll the story to roll it ahead what happened she's going to get married to Vinny so when is she getting married of course she's getting married on Shabbos and she's getting married in Chicago on Shabbos in church no rabbi just a priest that's it Vinny Vinny and Mary no that's the whole thing so fine so she gets into, she, the, the day that she's supposed to go, she's in the car, and, um, and uh, the bridesmaids, you know, come into the car, and they're on their way, they're on their way to the church, they're going to the church. No, nope. They're on their way to the church, the three friends are sitting in the car, and they say, you know what, we bought you a present. 
Which were present? One second. Like a bracha, bracha, ten, and a chalam. Shachar and Yavara. What did they buy her? They bought her a cross. They take the cross. She has her eyes closed. They take the cross. And they put the cross on her neck. Her eyes are closed. And the way the story is set over, her eyes are closed when the, when the, the cross hits her chest. Right? It's on a necklace and it hits her chest. All of a sudden there's a scream all the way to Shemayim. No! Screaming all the way to Shemayim. The way she says over the story, it goes all the way to the Kisa Kavli. Because Baruch is sitting by Kisa Kavli. There's a voice from this world screaming, no, what's going on? Sultan says, ah, don't worry about it. It's one of the girls. She's intermarrying, eh, whatever it is. Out comes a Malach. And the Malach says, you have to give her a chance. Why do you have to give her a chance? Who are you? Who's the Malach? I am the Malach of the candles. I'm the two candles that she lit, and I say you have to give her a chance. Hashem says, how long did, she, how long did it take to light the candles? 40 seconds, Mishra made a bracha. She has a 40 second chance to change herself. 40 seconds. Okay, car's going, girls are in the car, they come to a red light in Chicago, light is red, windows open, there's four Jep girls from Brooklyn. Jep's an organization to be a car people. There's four Jep girls from Brooklyn standing on the corner, totally lost in Chicago, have no idea where to go. Car pulls up, it's a limo with looks like non-Jewish people in it. The Jep girls go over to the car and they're lost. And they say, how do you get to West, well, let's say 23rd Street, whatever it is. Mary's sitting in the back. She sees four girls. She, re- she realizes that they're Jewish. She says, oh, West 23rd, that's where my school used to be. Right? It, was, it used to be a conservative synagogue. Now it's, now it's an orthodox shul. She says, girls, hop in the car. And I, oh, you won't hop in the car. You girls are religious. So follow me. And I'll take you to the, to the, to the synagogue. I know that you'll, otherwise you're not going to be able to find it. <laughs> One of the Jeff girls from New York says, Excuse me, uh, how do you know anything about a synagogue? She says, what are you talking about? I'm Jewish. She looks at her chest and says, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Something happened to your mugging David. It's not looking very right over here. She goes, oh, no, no, I'm going to marry Vinny. And, 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 and the story is a much longer story, but whatever it is. She says, by the way, she says, she says, what's your name? She says, oh, they call me Mary. The Jeff girl asked her, what's your name? She goes, they call me Mary, but my name is really Miriam. So the Jeff girl says, look what I have. And she's wearing one of those silver things. My name is also Miriam. Isn't that crazy? I should have made Miriam meet Miriam. She says, well, we'll follow you. So they, they follow the, the car to the shul. They come to the shul, and the Jeff girl's thinking, what is a Jeff girl? 17-year-old Jeff girl, how is she going to save this woman who's on, in, in the car with her friends, wearing a cross, on her way to church to get married? What are you going to do? You give up. You'd walk away and say, what am I going to do, right? What can I do? This girl, she's a Brooklyn girl, right? She has chutzpah. She says, she says to her, listen, you're Jewish. Why don't you get a blessing from the rabbi? She goes, a blessing from the rabbi? She says, yeah, they're in the middle of services, you know, Saturday services. Come inside, get a blessing from the rabbi. She goes, you know what? I'm Jewish. I should get a blessing from the rabbi. She tells her friends, wait two minutes. I'm going to go inside to the synagogue and I'm going to get a blessing from the rabbi. Not knowing, of course, there's no way a rabbi's going to give you a blessing to Mary Vinnie. But the Jeff girl knew that, but she didn't know that. So she's about to get out of the car. The Jeff girl says, you really shouldn't wear that in synagogue. It might like shock him a little bit. She goes, oh, oh, you're right, 100%. I'm sorry. It's not respectful. She takes off the, the cross. She takes off the cross, off her neshama, and she puts it on the, on the chair. And the way she says over the story, that was the turning point. When she took that cross off and put it on the chair, that was where she opened up a little bit for Hashem. A little bit. A little teeny hole for Hashem. So, she goes ahead, and she comes into the shul. She walks into the shul. Now, she's in a wedding gown. I'm sure it wasn't very sneeistic, right? She walks into the girl section of the shul. And, you know, they're used to out of town with about chuvas and stuff like that. And the rabbits are sitting there, and all sitting there, and they're like, okay, listen, you know, some about chuvas take it a little bit. <laughs> she took Shabbos Kala. She took very literal. So and she went out and she bought a, you know, she bought out a wedding gown. Yeah, we're not going to say anything. So they're not going to say anything. Fine. She comes in. The Rebbitzin gets up. She gives her a hug and a kiss. What's up? What's going on? And she says, No, I'm, I'm wearing this because I'm going to. I'm getting married to who? To Vinny. She goes, He's Jewish? No, he's not Jewish. We're getting married. At church. She says, Listen, we're, we're almost finished praying. Uh, maybe my, my husband, you know, he's the rabbi of the synagogue. He'll talk to you. Maybe give you a blessing. I don't know. We were all playing the same game, right? Okay. Anyway, they finish diving. She's waiting. The girls are beeping in the car. Ready. They're getting crazy. And the rabbi comes out. He sees this beautiful Jewish girl. She's Miriam. It's a Jewish girl. He says, Miriam. It's Miriam. He says, listen, I'm not telling you Vinny, not Vinny, whatever. But you know what? 
maybe before you marry him, spend a Shabbos or two with us. And then decide if you want to do this. Because if you're going to marry him, you're never going to have a Shabbos. Maybe it's something you should look into. And then you push it off for a week, two weeks, three weeks, whatever it is. When a neshama, you know, I mean, maybe some of you guys have seen it, but when a neshama unravels, it unravels. Because it, it, our souls want holiness. So when you, when you start to scratch off the dirt a little bit and the diamond shines through, it wants to break all that dirt off. So automatically, she, without, didn't make any logic sense, she's on her way to a wedding, right? She came outside, she says over the story, she, she came outside and she went to her friends and she said, girls, I'm postponing the wedding. Oh, you can't, da, 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 we knew it. The minute you start talking to Jewish girls, we knew this was going to happen. We heard about you guys like this, you know. You never make up your mind. And you, you, da, 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 da. She turns around to Susie, one of the girls sitting in front. She goes, you can marry Vinny for me. Because the two of you have been looking at each other anyway all the time. I've been watching you. <laughs> so, you know what? The hall is there. It's paid for. The, the priest is there. You go marry him. And, and they drove off. And here was this girl sitting in a, at a shul in a, in a wedding dress on the day that she was going to marry Vinny. Okay, so they took her, the rabbi took her into his house and they ended up collecting money and they sent it to Eretz Yisrael, maybe even to Neveh. I'm not sure where she ended up, but it, I think it was Neveh. And she ended up going to Eretz Yisrael for a year and for two years and she ended up dating another guy. That guy ended up becoming a Rav Arul Chassid. They ended up living, okay, from Chicago, going to church, on a Shabbos, wearing a cross to get married to Vinny by a priest, ended up a Rav Arul Chassid in Mer Sharem, Yerushalayim. Because the Kodesh Baruch Hu says, it's not for you to finish. Just get it started. I can take a girl from Christian school wearing a cross on her way to church to marry Vinny with a priest. I have the power to take her, turn her around, and end up having her head shaven, Chassidish, Rav Arul Chassid, living in Mer Sha'ar and bringing up little Chassidish kids. Because you can't do that, but I can do that. Now, how do I know the story? So, there's a teacher in my school, about 10 years ago, who told me this story. She was a seminary girl. And she, on, on Shabbos, they send these seminary girls out to Sephardic homes, Hasidic homes, up north, down south, to, to experience different Shabbos. So these two girls were sent to this house in Mesh Aram. They come into the house, they sit down. You know, they're a guy with the big white, you know, white yarmulkes, and he goes to shul, and then this girl comes down, right? An American girl who speaks English, she comes down, and she's coming to light her candle. She has two, two little, she has like six kids, but she had like two little girls and two little boys going with her to light candles, and they see this woman is coming to light candles in a, in a wedding dress. Now they're like, Maybe all the women Shabbos Kala, you know, lichadaydi lichras Kala. You know, we don't know Minhagen, right? So it could be it's their minig, right? So they sit there quietly. They don't. They're not say anything. If you think I have a list, they said that she stood there for forty-five minutes to light candles. Everyone who doesn't have children, anyone needs a full shleima. She just had a whole list, crying by this name, crying by that name. This this one needs a shidduch. Mamish like a rebbitzin. She finishes the forty-five minutes. She sits down. She said, so you're wondering why I'm wearing this dress. She said, the reason I'm wearing this dress is because I was rewarded on Shabbos. Because when I was a little girl, I lit candles. And I know that's what saved me. And therefore, since I found God on Shabbos in this wedding dress, I made a, sh- a ned there that for the rest of my life, I will always light my candles in this wedding dress. And that's the story of a moment. How long is a red light, guys? Go outside. Go to the light. Sit there. 40 seconds. 40 seconds took a girl from the lowest point to the highest point. Just start. Just start with 40 seconds. And you can go from wherever you are to the highest point. Hashem will take you. But you have to stop at the red light. And she offered these kids help. If she would have said, I'm sorry, I'm on my way to my wedding, the light would have turned green and the limo would have continued and there would be a totally, totally different life forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. 
40 seconds in a person's time. Now we're all going to come up to heaven and we're going to say, God, you didn't give me a chance. You didn't give me the right parents. I was in the wrong neighborhood. I didn't go to yeshiva. Da, 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 da. You're going to have a million excuses. Hashem's going to take out a list and show you all the red lights He gave you. You went to a shir. You thought for 40 seconds you want to change your life. Then you didn't. You, saw, you went to a funeral and when you saw that this young guy died, you said, oh my God, I could die young also. I have to hop around. I have to jump. I have to change my life. But you didn't. You went to a wedding and you saw the beauty of a chassan and a kala getting married and you said, oh boy, I wish I would only have one girl like this guy has instead of 30 of them. But you didn't. Everybody has red lights in their life. Everybody does. The question is, how do you read it? Do you read it? Do you Moshe Rabbeinu read it? Leave me alone means if, if, I, if you leave me alone or leave me alone. That's the difference in how you read it. And you have to believe in yourself. And you have to believe that you can, that you can do anything. 